for how the United States should confront Vladimir Putin, who oversaw the long-running imprisonment and in-custody death of his most prominent domestic rival opposition leader, Alexei Navalny. The U.S. has been funding the Ukrainian opposition to Putin's long-running invasion. House Republicans are trying to either limit or stop more aid. Then there's prominent MAGA figures like Tucker Carlson, who are openly touting Putin's Russia. So the serious question is, how do you confront a nuclear-armed autocratic dictator on offense are also mixed with what I can only call some pretty absurd ones. Like, how should we as a society and American polls counter Tucker Carlson doing what you see on your screen, if you haven't watched it yourself, which is this total propaganda where he praises not only the Putin system, but the economic system that Putin and the Kremlin oversee now? That's one question. President Biden has been quite clear on all of this on foreign policy, confronting Putin with tough new sanctions here over Navalny's death and vowing to continue to back Ukraine without putting American boots on the ground. Tucker just put out a new statement criticizing Russia for Navalny's death. I want to mention that because it's a bit of a turn from everything he said and did on his recent trip to visit Putin in Russia. Now, his statement came shortly after the release of this Putin interview and what can only be described at times as an oddly promotional trip. All of this drawing a biting new roast from Jon Stewart in just his second episode since returning to The Daily Show last night. Where do I go to study the particulars of unquestioning propaganda? I would need mentorship. We're in Moscow tonight. We're here to interview the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. Saints be praised. <laughs> Tell me, Tucker, does this master class include field trips? This is the uh, grocery cart escalator. <laughs> this is designed, I'm figuring this out now, where the wheels don't move, they lock on the grocery cart escalator. Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> it went on like that. Now, as for the interview, there can be value factual, journalistic, and otherwise, to questioning all kinds of people, including people with power. In this instance, Carlson did not question Putin very sharply or fact-check him very much. At times, Carlson even echoed some of the blatant lies and propaganda coming from Putin, a former KGB officer. One example I'm about to show you with comedy afterward, if you want to find a laugh amidst the horror... Tucker Carlson wrongly saying out loud, of course, when Putin lies about a pretty well-known fact, the fact that Germany started World War II. What if Putin starts saying like, World War II was Poland's fault because they forced Hitler to invade them? I mean, what do you do with something like that? That's going to be hard. After World War I, this territory was transferred to Poland, and instead of Danzig, a city of Dansk emerged. Hitler asked them to give it amicably, but they refused. Of course. <laughs> Even Jon Stewart didn't have much else to say after that, and neither do I. It is just telling. Now then, John Stewart's longtime colleague, John Oliver, got in on all of this, mocking and roasting Tucker about how even Putin criticized Tucker over their interview afterwards. Tucker was so docile, even Putin later made fun of him. I honestly thought he'd be aggressive, asking these so-called sharp questions. I wasn't simply ready for it. I wanted it. Frankly speaking, I didn't get complete pleasure from this interview. <laughs> wow! There's embarrassing, and there's getting roasted by Putin for being a lapdog embarrassing. That's how Putin played Tucker. Putin is good at this, and he's good at rhetoric. And again, I'm not showing you any Putin clips for their veracity. It may be that no matter what an interviewer does, Putin, who's overseeing this dictatorship, who's currently holding an American reporter hostage, which they did discuss in the interview, he might criticize anyone for his own ends. But it does show that Tucker's effort to promote Putin and the whole system is obviously not even being returned in short order. So that's all of that. Then there's the actual United States Congress, where there is some bipartisanship, I want to note, on backing Ukraine in the Senate. If you're trying to tell a story in your mind where all the House, all, excuse me, not a House, all the Republicans in Congress are just against this and they're falling in the line with Tucker, that's actually not the case. There was a bipartisan agreement to try to continue to fund and support Ukraine. 
If you agree with that policy, you agree with the people in both parties in the Senate pushing it. But over in the House, where there is a more extreme MAGA flank, the Republicans there are trying to block any vote on that bipartisan package as Trump and Tucker bend to Putin in the background. Joan is with us as promised, and we are joined by Che Komandori, who has worked on several Democratic campaigns, including the Obama campaign. Uh, welcome to both of you. Uh, welcome back, Joan. Uh, che, as I said, some of it is absurdist, but that absurdity mm -hmm. is part of the political dynamics. Uh, what do you see there, and do you think uh, Tucker was, was filleted, uh, roasted, and toasted? Oh, he certainly was. I mean, it reminds me, there's a very famous line in The Office where Michael Scott says, I want people to suck up. I don't want people to suck up to me because they want to advance their career. I want them to suck up to me because they genuinely love me. And I think the reality <laughs> is that a guy like Vladimir Putin knows the difference. He knows that Tucker is merely an opportunist, and opportunists, like dictators know, can't really be trusted because they will simply not be loyal to the dictator mm. and to the regime. And that is a problem, I think, that the Republicans really have. They are all a bunch of opportunists. And you can see this in the GOP primary, where people like DeSantis and Christie, who were formerly Trump, Trump suck-ups, not, did not do well, because they couldn't explain why they sucked up to this guy and why they are no longer doing so. It's actually a great point, and you're taking it to, the, the, to some of the, uh, the theatrics of our current MAGA politics. Joan? And here we are at the table. I promised you your turn at this. Uh, it seemed like a rough run for Tucker there. It's a rough run for Tucker. I, t I promised you that I would engage in some schadenfreude. Tucker but Freud, it, sure. Tucker Freud. But it was almost sad to watch. Hmm. I mean, he's been completely neutered. I mean, pushing that shopping cart is kind of the definition of being neutered and being treated like that by Vladimir Putin. All It made me just wish for the day when Putin does the same thing to Trump, because that day probably will come. Putin knows he owns these people, and hmm. he acts accordingly. You know, Tucker's been all about the end of manhood, masculinity in crisis. Testicle tanning might be the answer to that. I'm worried. Mm -hmm. I think Tucker is in crisis, and he has been for some time. And you're quoting sort of him in those suggestions and ads they have about the tanning. Yes, he did. He did a whole feature on the, you know, the beauties of testicle tanning. And it, I was paid to watch it, Ari, and not paid enough. <laughs> but as add. a journalist, yeah. You, you got it. You know, sometimes. Jay, there's things you cover in journalism. Uh, <laughs> I want to bring it back a notch because uh, the, with, with regard to The Daily Show, uh, right. There's a history here. I want to show the original one, when younger John Stewart confronted a very different Tucker Carlson, who was actually pitching a very different set of uh, version of conservatism uh, in a defenestration that many believe helped lead to the cancellation of that show. Take a look. You have a responsibility to the public discourse. And you, you fail job at miserably it's really John off what of their marketing anyway? and strategy. Yeah, it's someone who watches your show and cannot take it anymore. How old are you? 35. And you wear a bow tie. Yeah, I do. I do. So, I do. so this is... No, no, I know, I know. So you're right. Let me just go. Now, come on. And come listen, on. I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that you're, that... Not, you're not a smart guy, because those are not easy to tie. Jay, was Jon Stewart right about Tucker then? Is he right now? And does it matter if someone who is this prominent in the MAGA world, um, who was only ousted in connection with the costly defamation loss for Fox, and who recently interviewed Trump, does it matter if this person is a fraud? Should people care? Oh, I think people definitely should care. And that's, that, epi that scene you just showed is a crucial moment in the supervillain origin story of Tucker Carlson. Hmm. T John Stewart embarrassed and humiliated him. And why did he do so? Because Tucker Carlson at that time was a George W. Bush neocon, and that was what he was touting. Now he is a Donald Trump MAGA isolationist, pro-Putinist, very, very different orientation. And what Tucker learned from that humiliation is, I'm never really going to believe in anything again. I am going to simply go where the, where the winds blow me, and I'm going to go where the opportunities may take me. And that's exactly what has occurred, and that is why Tucker's a fraud. I mean, he's and isn't really it, about I'm only jump, jumping in to say that you're reminding everyone uh, the conservatism and republicanism that he that Tucker was then affiliated with were against uh, these kind of dictators abroad, 
Um, and this is not flip-flopping on some random niche issue. This is not, you know, the wokeism stuff goes back and forth, but some of it could be reduced to kind of localized rhetoric. Um, and, and politicians in both parties have been known sometimes to tack back and forth. This is not that. Uh, they just yeah. oversaw the, the murder, the state assassination of a dissident. Um, they just invaded a country for the largest land war in Europe. They're holding, as I mentioned, a Wall Street Journal reporter who many journalists have stood up for and said, that's wrong. The Biden administration's working on his release. Um, I don't care the Wall Street Journal's owned by News Corp, which is owned by Fox, which has other people downplaying this. We, you know, there's, there's larger issues at stake. So when you look at that, yeah. uh, what does it tell you that the Republican Party Part of it, I, I mentioned, not the sum of the Senate, but part of it is taking cues from Tucker, who you say, uh, on the evidence, doesn't stand for anything. Yeah, I mean, Tucker Carlson, when John Stewart did that, uh, humiliated him, was in favor of, of, of invading countries that had dictators like Vladimir Putin in charge. And now he goes to those countries and says everything is great and you, we should follow the lead of this. And the reason this has happened, if you noticed, is because as the majority of Americans oppose Trump, Republicans oppose democracy. And Tucker yeah. understood that, and he simply went where the dictators were, are. Yes, that is, uh, Joan gets the last word. Shay's reading on it is the darkest reading, uh, probably the most disturbing reading, because you say, why does he need to go so far to justify this? And the worst possible answer, I want to be very careful, I can't say we can prove this yet, I can't right. say Tucker's admitted it, but the worst possible theory is to soften the ground for more of that stuff here at home in America. Oh, absolutely. You know, he's been sucking up to Orban. I mean, you know, he's, he sucks up to dis dictators now. That's his thing. The one thing I, I just always like to leave people on a positive note. Sure, let's do it. There's been some karma that's come for Tucker. He's no longer over on Fox News broadcasting to millions and millions of people. He's got these narrow channels. He does get attention when he interviews Putin, for better or worse. But in general, he's not quite the toxic uh, person in our culture with the wide reach that he was.